What is time? It is a distinct construct of creation along with space and matter. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1 shows that these essential elements were the creative acts of God. In the beginning, that's time. God created the heaven, that's space. And the earth, that's matter. Our world, life, and existence as we know it is within a framework called creation. As we study this framework from a scientific and biblical point of view, we find several amazing insights into both current and prophetic future events. All of time has already been created. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God requireth that which is past. To God the past is the same as the present, and the future is as done as the past. All of time has already been created. Time is a component of our existence and world apart from the realm of the supernatural. As part of creation, time has observable properties and laws of nature. Our current observation of time is only relative to our current placement within that time. All of time has already been created. We are only seeing it from our current vantage point. To illustrate the difference between linear and eternal, imagine you are standing on a sidewalk watching a parade go by. You see the different floats and bands go by until the end. Your reality is only what you see now and what you remember passing by you. If you were up in a helicopter, you'd be able to see the entire parade as one single event. From there, you could fly down and lower yourself into any part of the parade that you wanted. This is similar to how the angels and God travel in our time. It is not space and distance that is being traveled, but time is what separates from one dimension into another. Heaven represents eternity, eternal time, while earth represents linear time. They are different dimensions, but accessible to each other. Angels regularly transit between the two, seemingly without much of a barrier. These can be in ways that we see them as strangers unawares, or where we don't see them, but where they see us as our guardian angels. In rare cases, prophets are taken to heaven in the spirit to witness future events outside of our earthly linear time. Sin resulted in a separation and restricted access from the linear to the eternal. It was after Adam and Eve partook of the forbidden fruit that God removed their access to the eternal dimension. Genesis 3.22-24 Think of time like a vinyl music record. On a record, you have different tracks that have different songs. These would be similar to the different moments in our life. However, even though there are different tracks, there is only one groove on the entire record. The only thing about the present is that it is where the needle is currently traveling. The past tracks and music still exist in the same groove. Going back in time is only moving the needle, your soul, relatively, not the groove. Time is not just a construct. It can be affected by gravitational lensing. Clocks on a space station run faster than they do down here on Earth, no matter how accurate the mechanism. Hours and minutes are just constructs for measuring time, but time itself is an immutable fact. Recently I revisited a familiar Bible passage and the Lord showed me something that prompted this much further research article and it also seemed to fit together several other puzzle pieces that I had noted and observed before. I had known that the Antichrist would want to try and change time and laws of nature, but I never noticed the thought that it is connected to that desire that God will actually allow him to change the laws of nature and time for apparently the first half of the tribulation in the first three and a half years. The implications of this are incredible, and if this mystery has caught your attention too, then keep on watching. God told the prophet Daniel that many of the things that he had seen in his visions would be concealed until the time near the end. Only then would mankind have the increased knowledge, Daniel 12.4, to fully understand how the visions would transpire. Whatever Daniel saw, it was so mind-blowing that the Bible takes special note of how much it disturbed him. If we saw events such as space, time travel occurring, we'd be disturbed too. After Noah's flood, the fallen angels interacted with mankind again. The Tower of Babel was more than just an architectural pursuit. It was the center of fallen angels sharing their insider knowledge of creation with mankind. The Tower of Babel was meant to be the headquarters of technology and knowledge for the sole purpose of being used against God's work in humanity. 
Genesis 11, 5 through 6 records, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. The fallen angels already had insider information about the mechanics and principles involved in transiting between dimensions, as well as a host of higher knowledge of the laws of science and nature. It is pretty sobering to think that even God mentioned that there is nothing that mankind could not technically do. The partnership with the fallen angels, the insider information, and the open rebellion had to be stopped. At the Tower of Babel, the phrase, they begin to do, has the idea of to bore and to break as if by a wedge, and also the idea of a player on an instrument. Was God stating that they were starting to build a facility where ultimately they were going to build a technological stargate where the fallen angels would attempt to re-enter heaven? The fallen angels had already corrupted the world before Noah's flood, and they were judged for it. 2 Peter 2, 4 reminds us, God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Hell, mentioned here, is the Greek word Tartaru from Tartaros, the deepest abyss of Hades. See also Jude 1, 6. The pre-flood fallen angels, known as the Titans, are imprisoned in what is called Tartarus, the abyss. Revelation 9, 1-2, To him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. The bottomless pit abyss is different from the pit grave Sheol. The bottomless pit is most likely a black hole or singularity, where the fallen angels, including Apollyon, are unable to get out. Nothing in our mental concepts is more bottomless than a black hole. A singularity that is infinitely dense, yet infinitely small, where the laws of physics break down. Revelation 12, 1-3-7 tells us that Satan will be bound for a thousand years in the bottomless pit, Abusos, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Satan himself will be locked in the very dimension, the bottomless pit, that Apollyon and his friends are locked in now. After its quick defeat, only then will Satan be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20.10 The Bible records two instances where time was altered. Hezekiah with the shadow moving backwards 10 degrees. Notice here is a fundamental concept in time. The celestial clock that God ordained as his timepiece was altered, yet life on earth continued at a normal pace due to relativity and perception. Mankind could move about, but the sun and moon clock was rewound slightly back in time. This is technically back in time because God told us that the movement of the sun and moon determine our time. Joshua with the sun and moon standing still. By perception for those on earth, life proceeded as normal, even though the celestial clock in the heavens stopped. The movements of the celestial clock froze while the planet Earth continued through time. For many people, the concept of wormholes and interdimensional portals seems like the realm of science fiction. Yet when we look at scripture, we find writers describing what can only be termed as a wormhole, but from an ancient perspective. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet, and he rode upon a cherub and did fly, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind. And he made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Second Samuel 22, 10 through 12, and Psalms 18, 9 through 11. The word bowed has the idea of bending and stretched, as well as thrust down into. From an ancient perspective, the writer is telling us that when Jehovah intervened on his behalf, that the heavens, the sky, was warped open. There was darkness seen in the void behind Jehovah as he rode upon a cherub, which is a living creature. The void had a depth to it. There was a shimmering effect and a cloud-like look associated with it. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Exodus 24.10 Let us now look at a background of science and technology. Much of the technology we are about to discuss will sound bizarre and really strange, 
But keep in mind that the technology told to the general public is very controlled. The major world governments have technology that is 50 to 100 years more advanced than what the public is led to believe or told about. Whenever a government unveils technology to the public as new, they are releasing technology that they've had for quite a while. For example, Hitler's Air Force had prototype aircraft that were admittedly 30 years more advanced than anything the Allies had at the time. This was in 1945. The American B-2 bomber, which is based off of their designs, wasn't released until the 1980s. So always keep in mind that there are many advanced technologies and fields of science deliberately kept from public consumption. If they are ever mentioned, they are only in context of science fiction movies to make people think that similar technologies do not exist. Certain technology is also kept low-key because Satan is saving it for his great deception and lying wonders that he will use during the tribulation period. The idea of wormholes comes from Einstein's general theory of relativity, a shortcut through time and space. His famous E equals MC squared, the letter C represents the speed of light, which has a time component. In 1925, Albert Einstein published his unified field theory of gravitation and electricity. This was released close to the release state of his theory of relativity. This sought to show how the laws of electricity and magnetism could be unified with the laws of gravitation. In other words, all electrical, magnetic, and gravitational effects could be part of an underlying unified field. This unified field theory contained the beginnings of what would later become known as torsion theory. The unifying relationships were eventually published as only an appendix of the theory of relativity. In relativity, gravity and electromagnetism are related because mass is represented as a fraction of the square of the propagation velocity of electromagnetic radiation. So according to Einstein, even the charges and masses that distort space-time can be reduced to simple harmonics of electromagnetic fields. Many people have good reason to think that Nikola Tesla was smarter than Einstein. Back in the late 1800s, Tesla worked with many of the fluctuating magnetic field and gravity principles. The Tesla coil was invented by Tesla in 1891. Even Tesla in the late 1800s came up with designs for flying disks based on electrical principles to use electrostatic charges for electromagnetic propulsion. This uses a high voltage, high frequency coil, a resonant transformer similar to his Tesla coil, which gives the electrostatic and electromagnetic charges to the craft. High voltages would be available through mercury capacitors. The strong rotating electromagnetic fields were increased in voltage to create increased frequency field oscillations, essentially to where it created hyperspace. The separate gravitational field around the craft allowed the occupants to be unaffected by the gravitational effects outside the field, and that is why you often hear of UFOs making crazy turns at high speed that are impossible without normal aerodynamics and would normally rip an aircraft and occupant apart. It's because it has its own gravitational field now. Now, it is a matter of recorded history that the Nazis extensively sought out and searched for occult knowledge and scientific insight from esoteric sources. They had whole groups gathering and archiving of this knowledge from around the world. In Greek mythology based on the fallen angels, Mercury was the winged messenger. He is the keeper of boundaries, referring to his role as bridge between the upper and lower worlds. He is often portrayed in statues with a caduceus, a winged staff with intertwined serpents. Because of its special characteristics, the metal mercury has historically been used extensively in secret technology involving high spin, high voltage, high current capacitors, gravitational field research, as well as mercury plasma gyros using electrified mercury vapor. When we consider the powerful role of elemental mercury in its role in affecting gravity, we shouldn't be surprised to see that the caduceus is literally a blueprint of ancient understanding of how to bridge between the upper and lower worlds. The central staff represents the poloidal magnetic force needed, while the two serpents representing the counter-rotating, fluctuating electromagnetic fields, and the caps representing the mercury capacitor reservoirs. All simple mercury vortex technology that produces flight and can even be used to affect the time-space dimensions. Finally, one more piece of technology. A tokamak invented in the 1950s is a device using a magnetic field 
to confine a very hot plasma in the shape of a torus. Achieving a stable plasma equilibrium requires magnetic field lines that move around the torus in a helical shape. Basically, the electromagnetic fields keep the hot plasma in a donut shape. There are several types of tokamaks in various labs around the world, but they operate on the same principle. Uh, these are used to generate star-like conditions in the search for future clean energy sources. Theoretically, if you can generate a torsion field of sufficient magnitude, you can bend the four dimensions of space around the generator. When you bend space, you also bend time. Many people wonder, if there is technology to create anti-gravity vehicles, why don't we hear about them? Because creating anti-gravity technology means that it quickly leads to technology and science that can manipulate time and the space and energy beyond. This is the prime reason why both of these technologies are heavily suppressed, because they are linked. So let us now look at the science organization that seems most capable of having and using this technology for potential time manipulation, as well as the ability to create wormholes through dimensions. Located on the France-Switzerland border, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, known as CERN, operates the world's largest and most expensive machine, a 17-mile underground particle accelerator known as a Large Hadron Collider. At CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, physicists and engineers are probing the fundamental structure of the universe. They use the world's largest and most complex scientific instruments to study the basic constituents of matter, the fundamental particles. The particles are made to collide together at close to the speed of light. The process gives the physicists clues about how the particles interact and provides insights into the fundamental laws of nature. The instruments used at CERN are purpose-built particle accelerators and detectors. Accelerators boost beams of particles to high energies before the beams are made to collide with each other or with stationary targets. Detectors observe and record the results of these collisions. The majority of the equipment is located 300 feet below ground, with certain areas for the larger equipment and detectors. Let's now take a tour with a few pictures, but pay attention to the shape and design of the equipment since we will be seeing some patterns later. Uh, this is one of their office and control buildings. The majority of the underground loop is just miles and miles of high-tech, supercooled electromagnetic accelerator tubing. Here is the largest detector section, named Atlas, under construction. The eight large pipe structures are electromagnets. All the magnets on the LHC are electromagnets. The main dipoles generate powerful 8.4 Tesla magnetic fields, more than 100,000 times more powerful than the Earth's magnetic field. One of the detectors. You start to get an idea of how large this entire underground complex is here. More special detectors. More massive detectors, magnets, and other equipment. One of the main detectors with heavy shielding. Some serious money, thought, and effort has gone into this facility. So can this facility technically produce black holes, possibly wormholes, and distort space-time? We have calculated the energy at which we expect to detect these many black holes in gravity's rainbow, a new theory. If we do detect many black holes at this energy, then we will know that both gravity's rainbow and extra dimensions are correct. Dr. Mil Fazal told Fizz.org. Just as many parallel sheets of paper, which are two-dimensional objects, breadth and length, can exist in a third dimension height, parallel universes can also exist in higher dimensions, cited Dr. Fazell. We predict that gravity can leak into extra dimensions, and if it does, then miniature black holes can be produced at the LHC, parallel universes. What we mean is real universes in extra dimensions. Now things start to get curious. Alice, the name of one of their detectors, is one of the largest experiments in the world devoted to research in the physics of matter at an infinitely small scale. You are invited to tumble down the rabbit hole into the wonderland of Alice. Not only do they know that they can technically produce black holes with potential access to other dimensions, they have a not-so-subtle 
pattern of dropping hints that this is their intended goal all along. In the reference story of Alice in Wonderland, the white rabbit who lured her down into the rabbit hole complains that he is late for a very important date. The name of one of the largest pieces of equipment there is called Atlas. Mapping the secrets of the universe, Atlas is a particle physics experiment at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN that is searching for new discoveries in the head-on collisions of protons at extraordinarily high energy. Atlas will learn about the basic forces that have shaped our universe since the beginning of time and that will determine its fate. Along the possible unknowns are extra dimensions of space. Atlas is the name after the mythological Atlas, who took up the burden of one of the gods of the old, fallen kingdom of the now-dead golden age of the Titans, or the fallen angels. This Greek mythology did have a basis in the pre-flood angels who came down and corrupted the world before the flood with their technology and powers. Likewise, just as in the days of Noah, we now have these scientists and governments taking up the tasks of the fallen angels from the pre-flood period. The fallen angels currently imprisoned in the abyss appear to be using CERN to unlock the door from the other side. Sergio Bertolucci, the director for research and scientific computing at CERN said, Out of this door might come something, or we might send something through it. Dr. Bertolucci later got in touch to confirm that yes indeed there would be an open door, but it, even with the power of the LHC as, at his disposal, he would only be able to hold it open a very tiny lapse of time, 10 to 26 seconds. But during that infinitesimal amount of time, we would be able to peer into this open door either by getting something out of it or sending something into it. That was in 2009. Significant upgrades in power and capacity have been made since then. If the fallen angels are indeed currently confined in some form of a dimensional black hole, the abyss, then the size of the opening would really be irrelevant. Of course, we have to take it at face value that his statement regarding the size from six years ago is accurate. However, just breaching it at all just for a few seconds would seem to be enough for their purposes. This year, CERN is celebrating 2015, the International Year of Light which was named and declared by the UN General Assembly. This marks the centenary of the publication of Einstein's theory of general relativity. Keep in mind that Lucifer is known as the Angel of Light. Now, right next to the headquarters building at CERN, there is a six-foot-tall statue of the Hindu deity Shiva, the Destroyer, engaging in the Nataraja dance presented by the Department of Atomic Energy of India supposedly because of its paralleling the movements or dance of subatomic particles. I don't buy that. At night, the statue is lit so as to direct its shadow distinctly onto the main CERN building. This is the god of destruction coming through a gateway. Uh, coincidence? I think not. Notice that the filigree and styling on the statue's depiction mirrors visual elements that science associates with portals, stargates, wormholes, black holes opening. The name CERN is derived from the acronym for the French pronunciation of European Organization for Nuclear Research. However, the argument could be made that the facility, largely located 300 feet underground, gets its name from Cernunos, the horned god of the underworld. He is commonly represented as a male deer with antlers and is equivalent to Osiris, and also Hermes, a.k.a. Mercury. Shiva, the statue they have next to their headquarters, is also equivalent to Cernunos. Both are worshipped as the overseer of the door to the other world. A large portion of CERN is located in the territory of St. Genus Puli. In Roman times, it was called Apollyacum. The name Puli comes from the Latin Apollyacum, with the Latin suffix Iacum denoting possession. The town and a temple located there were dedicated to Apollyon, the destroyer, the same person as Shiva, right in this exact spot where they built the accelerator today. Right outside of the main CERN building is a square sculpture that visually appears to depict a spiraling wormhole. As you study the sciences more, you see that this sculpture not only shows some type of portal, is also showing the science used exactly in the process. This is not just artwork. It quickly shows that creating dimensional portals involves a merging of the rectangular cube right angle view of gravitational theory with the spherical round electric universe view. 
a merging of two complete scientific fields to create the toroidal forces necessary where the fields collide to become unified. This knowledge and ability is the key. Speaking of a key, on January 12, 2015, CERN posted an update called LHC Season 2, Holding the Key to New Frontiers. To mark the restart of the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, the activities coordinator symbolically handed over the LHC key to the operations team. Quote, with collisions at energies never reached in a particle accelerator before, the LHC will open a new window for discovery. End quote. Based on what we have seen in the other parts of this series, I believe they are gloating over the fact that their intent is to open the bottomless pit. It hasn't happened yet, but they are almost there. The Dan Brown movie, Angels and Demons, had a portion filmed right here at the LHC. On the CERN website, they have a whole subpage about the filming that took place there. The image shown here is from CERN's website. Notice that they combined the illuminated angel Lucifer with the LHC and even overlaid a graphic logo to let you know that this is definitely about them taking up the task for the fallen angels. They even tell you, discover the connection. Speaking of Hollywood, it is Satan's main tool for indoctrinating, programming, and communicating parables to his disciples around the world. Make no mistake about it. Hollywood is entirely a tool of Satan. Christians have no business going to it for entertainment or mental food. None. The Kodak Theater where the Oscar ceremonies are held is covered with obvious large and blatant imagery of the fallen angels as well as a large stylized Ishtar gate from Babylon. Right in the courtyard of the theater is a massive six-story stylized Ishtar gate modeled after the gate of the gods from ancient Babylon. Notice that this structure was built to perfectly frame the famous Hollywood sign located on the hills in the distance. Hollywood is all about making the theater screen and your television screen a gateway to what Satan produces. In several places they show direct Babylonian references to the fallen angels. Here are some of the references they are pulling from and historical artifacts that they have plastered all over their walls and sizes that you can even clearly see on Google Earth. They know who they ultimately serve. Their goal is to feed your mind. Satan's top disciples are rewarded for their service. The British Academy Film Awards is basically the face of Apollo, the god of light, Lucifer. The Saturn Award for Science Fiction obviously showcases Saturn, a direct reference to Satan and Molech. And the Oscar Award is modeled after the Egyptian chief god Osiris. Satan is using Hollywood to make sure his disciples around the world are informed and ready for the events about to transpire in this world. They are eagerly awaiting his arrival. Let us now look at some of the patterns Satan uses in his Hollywood and media. CERN LHC references. These are seen in shapes and designs used in movies that clearly use the Large Hadron Collider for inspiration or direct reference. Visually, things that clearly remind us of specific equipment at CERN. Portal of Stargate's Time Machines. These would include references to actual hardware or shape references to devices that facilitate time manipulation. Tesseract, cube, octagon, tetrahedron. A tesseract geometrically is a four-dimensional analog of the cube. It is a cube representation within a cube. It is an extension of a cube, which a cube is just a figure or extension of a square. So it's symbolically a tesseract or cube within a cube represents the abyss where the fallen angels are currently held prisoner. It is not exactly in our dimension, but can be reached from ours. A tesseract can be represented different ways. Because of this, those using it as a veiled reference to the abyss and or Satan Lucifer will often change out the variations of how it is depicted to obscure the symbolism and make it not so obvious. These can appear as a flattened, angled cube outline, a hexagon, or a tetrahedron, a pyramid with three-sided base. Symbolically, a black cube is used by the occult and their disciples as a reference to Satan and Saturn which represents his realm. Ideologically, I view it as their way of expressing the embodiment of Satan, his intelligence, and his kingdom. God's kingdom is embodied by the New Jerusalem, which is described as a golden cube. 
So Satan's counterpoint kingdom is embodied and represented by a black cube. And remember, the black tesseract is also geometrically represented by a black tetrahedron. Symbolically, they can be used interchangeably. Many art installations and black cube buildings are scattered around the world. The 9-11 World Trade Center Memorial is really two black tesseracts side by side, each with a cube within a cube. Ideologically, the symbolism is mockingly suggesting that the victim's souls are trapped there in a black hole, the bottomless pit forever. Notice how the water comes down the sides, creating a cloudy feathering. Water is often used to represent time symbolically. Mecca's Kaaba is another example. In film and TV, Star Trek depicts their greatest threat, the Borg, as an intelligent hive-based entity. And interestingly, they made a whole Star Trek film centered around the concept of the Borg cube messing with time. CERN uses this illustration here to represent their massive computer data center. It is used throughout many of their books, building artwork, and even on certain name badges. Another pattern to be looking for is when the other patterns are paired with concepts of black holes, wormholes, or some other type of dimensional rift or singularity. Time travel. Is the subject, plot, or graphic symbolism related to time travel? Rainbows, gravity's rainbow. In heavily patterned cases, we'll often find subtle references to rainbows. These are subtle references to breaking down light, science, and time, specifically to access what is called gravity's rainbow, which involves time travel and portals. Satan always has his counterpoint to God's creation. God gave the rainbow as a sign to Noah that he would never flood the entire earth again. It also represented the massive change in the world that Noah had been used to. Satan uses references to rainbows and prisms to emphasize that he wants to drastically and completely change the world and even the dimension in which mankind dwells. Trains and Railroads Just like a vinyl record can represent time, a railroad and train can also represent time. The track represents time, and the train represents the present where the observer is. Train wrecks and derailments, when coupled with other references to time, are used to represent time coming undone. Saturn, which represents Molech, Satan, Lucifer, all interchangeably. At Saturn's pole, there is a gigantic hexagon-shaped storm. Remember how we've seen the tesseract cube, hexagon, flattened cube? This is why they are connected. They are visually linking the idea of the abyss, where the fallen angels are imprisoned, with the pattern that represents and embodies Satan's realm. If you watch a time lapse of how the Muslims circle the Kaaba, built with black granite, during their major festivals, the visual effect is eerily almost identical to the hexagon storm seen on Saturn's pole. Occult references. These can be a wide variety of things, but it catches our attention more when these are used in conjunction with several of the other patterns at the same time. Fallen angels, demigods, return of, Again, one of the conjunctive patterns would include the breaking out of, or return, or superheroes usually emerging with special powers, especially coming from another dimension. Number 8, an infinity. The inclusion of a reference to the mathematical symbol for infinity, which is also represented by turning the symbol vertical to form the number 8, this is usually seen in instances where the number 8 becomes distinctly prominent in media that also uses the other patterns. The 8 and infinity symbol also harkens to the concept that there are 88 constellations. And the Bible tells us that the sun, moon, and stars, including the constellations, Isaiah 13.10, were established to mark time. So the 8 symbol represents infinity, or even just the whole subject of time. One of Satan's symbols that is used a lot is called an Ouroboros, which is a snake eating its tail. This represents an endless loop or infinity that he wants to create. By twisting the Ouroboros once, like a rubber band, it changes into another symbol for infinity and a numerical reference to time. These are the major patterns which we are going to focus on today. 
one or two patterns appearing can sometimes be chalked up to coincidence. It is only when we start seeing groupings of several closely related patterns in one media piece that it starts to raise our eyebrows. Only then can we more strongly make a case that there's a distinctive message and parable being crafted and communicated. So now we're going to look at several specific media pieces where these pattern groupings strongly point toward what Satan will be doing during the tribulation period. The 2014 Video Music Awards. Just from their main graphic we see some design that may hint at particle collisions and the CERN structure, but it isn't conclusive just by itself. Along with further clear CERN references in 666, the set had the performers entering from off stage through a time tunnel style portal onto a central vortex stage right in the center, again very similar to the sculpture in front of CERN, the, the portal wormhole with the sphere in the center. Right in the center are particle streams converging on the very central stage. Uh, there's definite CERN and portal references, uh, even more. Uh, likewise at the 2014 Emmy Awards, which also happened to be the 66th award, had a rather obvious visual reference to the Large Hydron Collider, the LHC. Now, the Emmy Award itself is uh, admittedly depicted it as holding an atom, and I believe the figure with the lightning bolt wings is truly Lucifer, who fell as lightning. Oscars 2015. The floor art, background, and stage props all appear to pull inspiration directly from the CERN CMS detector, particle physics, collisions, and the overall collider schematics. Are they signaling that this is the year it will be fully activated for its intended purpose? Seems to be getting them ready for something. A little more <laughs> of the same. Even the side art was a direct reference in conjunction with everything else. For the 2015 Super Bowl, Katy Perry also made a Pepsi commercial, hyped for halftime, released just prior to the Super Bowl. The commercial was about her upcoming halftime show, and it starts with her entering in through a doorway, walking in a space suit with implied devil horns, with what appears like a giant UFO reminiscent of Close Encounters of the Third Kind in the background. After taking off the space suit, she stops in front of a model of a stadium while a giant fan sits prominently in the background, very similar in configuration to CERN's Large Hadron Collider, she talks about glitter, particles. She shows off her time machine, saying she is going to be bringing in a special guest. In the background, there is a noticeable 666 on those stacked crates. She mentions Pegasus, a winged white horse in Greek mythology, and there are blatant references throughout to gravity's rainbow, time travel and portals, with the various rainbow neon CERN circles, a neon rainbow, and even a neon cube. The commercial ends with Katie walking through another large doorway bathed in light with exploding fireworks superimposed, a, co a reference to colliding particles. Then, not too long after that, was the 2015 Super Bowl with the same Katy Perry. Her performance was seen by 118.5 million viewers, making it the most watched halftime show ever, according to Nielsen data. The key figure is a falling star angel. And there are clearly particles and collisions. Uh, these particles open a doorway. The woman rides the beast as she makes entrance to the doorway the particles opened. Uh, it's very blatant. On November 10th, 2014, Rihanna visited the White House. After not posting anything on Instagram for six months, she suddenly felt the need to post pictures of her at the White House gate, calling to open the gates while wearing a dress that clearly depicted the recognizable LHC structure and corresponding colors even. Inception. This movie, which deals with time and perception, includes veiled references to the Tesseract, even just here in the poster. Prominent cube ideas, more cubes, and even more cubes. Now the whole movie is about breaking out of the reality and perception. Source Code, a movie about a catastrophic train wreck and time loops. 
where each time loop is exactly eight minutes long. The watch here also points to the number eight. More subtle references to eight and the train about to come off the tracks. With visual references to Rubik's cubes, which are cubes within a cube, representing the tesseract. The train, which is time, is about to come off the tracks due to the opening of the abyss, the cubes, with mankind's help. Star Trek The Future Begins, a movie about time travel and manipulating the past. One of the prominent sets was modeled after a tokamak reactor, which in real life is used to create torsion fields. Uh, interesting visual reference that harkens to CERN. Super 8 the movie, about a major train wreck, which also has hundreds and hundreds of cubes. Notice the additional cube tile pattern created here with the cubes. The cubes are later found out to be connected to alien technology. The Flash, an ABC TV series about the Flash, the fastest man alive, supposedly, after a particle accelerator causes a freak storm, end quote. Even in the promotional graphics here, they include in the background the familiar portal and accelerator device modeled after the same LHC setup. And you see it later in the series as very strongly related to the LHC layout. In the series, it was a dimensional portal used for those with, uh, with special powers, the demigods. 2001 A Space Odyssey is a film directed by Stanley Kubrick. In the original novel, written by Arthur C. Clarke, the setting for the monolith was originally on Saturn, Molech, not Jupiter as portrayed in the movie. The reason Kubrick changed the location to Jupiter was because the rings of Saturn were too hard to make with the special effects of 1968. Coupled with the dimensional travel, Saturn and a birth of the new entity at the end, we look a little closer and see much more patterns that hint at the CERN portal. In the movie, the main character enters the vortex and goes to where he sees himself in the future. Then the black monolith from Aliens helps him make the next step in evolution to become a star child. Stanley Kubrick originally intended the monolith in 2001, A Space Odyssey, to be a tetrahedron, according to Marvin Minsky, a cognitive scientist and expert on artificial intelligence who advised Kubrick on the HAL 9000 computer and other aspects of the movie. Kubrick scrapped the idea of using the tetrahedron when a visitor who saw footage of it did not recognize what it was and he didn't know want anything in the movie regularly pe regular people would not understand. So he used the black rectangle, which still hints closely to the black cube, especially in the context with everything else. In the movie, there is a higher intelligence, Hal, could be <laughs> even Hell, behind orchestrating the events. A stargate and the arrival of an entity is pivotal to the plot. The entire mission of the crew, unwittingly, is to enable and set these events in motion. Flight of the Navigator movie, again, deals with time travel, time perception, celestial knowledge, star charts, etc. The main intelligence that time travels also resembles HAL. The eyepiece also is very similar to portal depictions in other movies, especially Stargate. Oblivion, the movie released April 19, 2013, uh, has a lot of symbolism in it. The powerful entity known as the Tet. It's a large black tetrahedron shaped space station. Another ship named Odyssey crashes down to Earth after being summoned. The movie Oblivion has the exact same core message as 2001 A Space Odyssey, a higher intelligence directing a human technology in efforts to bring forth its desired end. I believe the more specific Oblivion clarifies the broader 2001 message. Destruction of Earth's cities, mass depopulation, key controlled clones, advanced technology, and persecuted groups. You will see these elements in the tribulation time period. If, if you're here. The drone's energy compartments mirror the CERN Alice structure. In the movie, this technology is critical to cracking the tet, the tetrahedron representing the tesseract. Just like the 2001 Space Odyssey, Oblivion also has a higher intelligence entity behind all of the deception with the exact same visual identity as HAL, Hell, and is further identified with the tetrahedron. 
The Avengers. Notice that Hollywood has had a continuous pre-programming of mankind regarding these events and constructs. In many major movies, a magical cube is always the source of power. Whoever unlocks the power of the cube can rule the world. This is a very real concept to Satan's upper disciples. They are literally seeking the power of the Tesseract, the singularity where the fallen angels are held. One of the most recent examples used to drive this home to people and build on previous long-term messaging is Marvel's The Avengers. In the conditioning tools, the connection between the cubes will always be a device visually linked to the CERN accelerator technology. Call of Duty Black Ops 3 video game trailer. The premise of this video game is, quote, in the next 50 years, technological advancements will lead us into a world where only those who risk going too far will find out how far we can actually go, end quote. And another quote, mankind's greatest mistake will be its inability to control the technology it has created, end quote. It briefly shows a picture of the CERN Alice detector. Not only is there that picture, but we also see an almost exact ripple blast similar to the CERN film Symmetry, which we don't have time to cover here. Fantastic Four movie. The octagonal di dimensional gateway that they use is patterned after the LHC setup and also the CERN data bank. Multiple parts are copied closely in style. Again, similar outline shapes, but harder to see. Displayed on one of the screens in the trailer is a dimensional view that helps you visualize it better and make the connection. This is their dimensional gateway. Quote, you opened a door you don't know how to close, end quote. Again, direct referencing of parts and construction. Uh, pretty blatant. Even apart from their dimensional gateway, they use the same CERN octagonal reference again in the trailer training scene. Flash Forward was first a novel dealing with time manipulation set at CERN. It was then made into an ABC TV series. Sawyer's story follows a research team using the particle accelerator at CERN in pursuit of the elusive Higgs boson, a theoretical subatomic particle. But instead of finding the Higgs, the consciousness of the entire human race is thrown ahead by 21 years, according to the story. Interestingly, one of CERN's top scientists John Ellis did a video interview talking about the science behind the Flash Forward series. For his interview, the statue of Shiva is prominently in the background with the CERN 666 logo lined up directly underneath. Home. Right away in their title logo we see the portal spiral from the sculpture that is right outside of the main CERN building. Note that it is not just a normal spiral. It is a spiral with a circle or sphere at the center, which is the exact same as the CERN sculpture. It also appears several other times throughout just the trailer. There is also the exact same horn figure coming through a lighted doorway from a UFO as Katy Perry's pre-halftime Pepsi commercial. There is also the exact same splitting of the particle sequence that was seen in Katy Perry's 2015 halftime show along with the main horn figure marching down the middle after walking down a series of spiral steps. Blatant references to Saturn, Satan and gravity's rainbow, time travel dimensional portals, and of course, I'm, I mean they practically have everything in here, double references to black, black tetrahedrons, the Tesseract, and Tet spaceships just like in Oblivion and intended for 2001 Space Odyssey, another tetrahedron, Note the size. It appears to be Satan's mimicking of the New Jerusalem, which would be similar in size ratio to Earth. Interstellar. This movie, perhaps more than others, most blatantly communicates the concepts of entities trapped in a construct, communicating, channeling with Earthlings to give them the knowledge to physically alter gravity or time. This is accomplished by communicating and traveling through a wormhole, black hole, near Saturn, Molek, to another galaxy dimension. The major themes being impressed upon people are how gravity affects time and preparing them for visual, time, and dimensional effects mankind is about to witness during the tribulation. The CERN-shaped spaceship near Saturn, the wormhole, black hole. 
Near the ending of the movie, the main character is trapped in a multi-dimensional singularity called a Tesseract. It allows him to communicate instructions and view across time. Rewind TV show. It was a canceled TV show pilot revolving around a team of military field operatives and civilian scientists who travel back into time using an underground particle accelerator to alter past events in order to change the future. Someone spent a lot of money to make this pilot episode, which is filled with blatant references to the CERN accelerator, time travel, and Rubik's Cubes. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation trailer. While not as blatant, there are some curious references in the Mission Impossible trailer. These include what appears to be a tokamak reactor, as well as circular blueprints that are shown with the Taurus blueprints. These are blueprints, but they could also reference the various computer displays at CERN. Tom Cruise later jumping into what appears to be a water intake, but could represent a portal, especially with water regularly used in the occult to represent time. Even the opening somewhat resembles a typical Stargate portal. I doubt it is coincidence. Lego Dimensions. Uh, this is their video game trailer. Obviously, it's about dimensional travel. And again, notice that the spiral also suggests a sphere in the center, just like the CERN sculpture. The trailer starts out with a mysterious black box, Pandora's box, arriving at the front door. This is a clear reference to the Tesseract concept. The TV briefly shows a scene from The Wizard of Oz as the house travels through the tornado portal. Also on the shelf, you'll notice a gold lion, similar to Katy Perry's halftime show, is noticeably visible several times throughout the trailer. The CERN-like dimensional portal activated. Notice that one of the symbols they use to imply time is very, very similar to the symbol for the god Mercury, the keeper of boundaries with his role as bridge between the upper and lower worlds, and Mercury with its use in related technology with altering time space. The trailer shows the Lego characters traveling down the yellow brick road, which is often used in the occult to represent going down the path of gaining knowledge of the occult. The Lego characters travel to the Emerald City, presumably to meet the wizard so they can get knowledge, etc. Disney's Tomorrowland movie trailer. The movie description reads, Embark on a danger-filled mission to unearth the secrets of an enigmatic place somewhere in time and space known only as Tomorrowland. What they must do there changes the world and them forever. End quote. Eerie similarities to the Emerald City especially with it being in another dimension. A segmented display very similar to the LHC computer readouts of the various detector sectors. On the main character's shirt is seen the predictable and obvious spiral pattern. A mini portal very similar to Lego Dimensions and others is seen in the living room. And I'm sure there's a lot more in the movie. This has been a very small sampling of examples available. There is a lot more of this woven messaging and tightly maintained core theme of Stargates, releasing powerful unfriendlies, trapped entities, etc. Why? Where will people turn to when these events happen? During the tribulation opening events, the handlers will be able to tell the masses that they know what is going on and have been trying to tell the people. They must control information. As long as they hold the card of people believing them more, the average person will be less likely to seek after the Bible to explain world events. This psychological device is called falsified metacommunication, telling a story that is almost completely true, but with tiny details tweaked to provide the illusion that the whole is false. The education efforts prior to the tribulation provides the powers that be with leverage to make the claim that these are indeed alien entities, etc., etc. Pre-education makes it so much easier to get people to follow you at the critical times when you only want them to react and not to think. Speculation. Ideas or guesses about something that is not known, the contemplation or consideration of some subject, a conclusion or opinion reached by such contemplation. I will be the first to tell you I do not know all that this means. But I will share with you several of my considerations 
that I think may have some likelihood or bearing on the events. The main purpose for this speculation is to narrow down the seemingly possible chain of events so that we can get a better idea of number one, what further evidences we should be looking for, number two, what warnings and insight we can provide to those who might be affected by these events, and three, examining correlation between timing of events and future prophetic events. So here are some brainstorm thoughts. Somehow, time will be disrupted. Satan and his demons know that there is an appointed time for their judgment. So what is their best hope for avoiding the appointment? Go back in time or somehow stop time? When Jesus says that he will shorten the days at the midpoint during the tribulation, is he also implying that the days have already been lengthened prior? Has Satan slowed down the celestial clock to give himself more time? Or will Christ end the time loops that would have given Satan an unlimited number of days to kill? Somehow, time will be the same. The Bible tells us that the Antichrist will change times and laws for a season, but God also lays out a set period of time for tribulation events to be transpiring in. The length of the witness's testimony, the length of time after the abomination of desolation, etc. Revelation also makes repeated references to the sun and moon for comparison. It may be that the celestial clockwork, the sun, moon, and stars, is unaffected by events on earth, but that it is earth's time space that is tampered with during the three and a half years that God allows it. I don't know. If this is true, then it may be a case of what's called time dilation and gravitic lensing, where the time changes are only relative, but the results are real. While I cannot say one way or another, I would expect any fiddling with time to not go beyond the lifetime timeline of those who have witnessed the rebirth of the state of Israel. The other prophetic events have been fulfilled within that time frame, and Christ did say that some of those that saw the rebirth would also be alive at the end of the tribulation. So I expect it to happen sometime within that life timeline. Somehow laws of nature will be disrupted. This could easily cover the opening across dimensions to open the bottomless pit. The book of Revelation mentions that there will be a period of five months where people will not be able to die. What is the only way that this could happen? Time loops seem to be a technical solution to die but not die yet. It is interesting to note that there have been a number of movies, especially recent, all dealing with time loops and going back in time. For example, Star Trek, Edge of Tomorrow, Stargate, the Terminator series, uh, Groundhog Day, Back to the Future, etc. Is Satan trying to get people ready and used to what is about to happen? Friend, I do not know what the past, present, or future holds. All I can do is research and make educated guesses. I do know that the Lord commands us to watch and live as though he is returning unexpectedly. Regardless of what Satan and the Antichrist end up doing during their short time in the limelight, it will have zero bearing on your and my accountability in the here and now. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We will have to give an account on that day of all our labor and lack of labor for eternity. Eternity is what matters, friend. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Be ye also ready, or you will be left with the unbelievers. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. It has been amazing and humbling to see how the Lord opened the doors of understanding on this subject and the related subjects just within the last weeks. I have heard from other watchmen the same experience of being burdened all of a sudden to get this information out there during these weeks. 
Many connections are now being noticed by the watchman as we see how close Satan is to his goal. The Lord has also worked various events in my own life during this time that have grabbed my attention like no other to this exact singular subject. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Time is short. The watchmen are already blowing the trumpets. Are you ready?